Among the collections of the Skletter Center, Research Library and Archives, travel accounts have a significant place. Susan Skletter collected travel accounts, mainly in English and French, about the Ottoman Empire. Among the travelers whose books are in the center's rare books collection, there is a particular group of British travelers who journeyed through Anatolia in the 19th century for the purpose of searching for the British past among the remnants of Greek civilization. These British archaeological travelers include Francis Vivian Jago Arundel, Sir Francis Beaufort, and Sir Charles Fellows. Among these traveler accounts, I will focus on Charles Fellows's, a journal written during an excursion in Asia Minor, published in 1839 in London by John Murray. What made this book particularly interesting for me is that Fellows not only provided the details of his long expedition in southwest Anatolia in search of archaeological sites, but also provided justifications for why these remnants did not belong with the Turks, i.e. the rulers of modern Anatolia, and should be appropriated by the British. Indeed, this journal became instrumental in increasing interest among the British public for Lycian artifacts and Fellows was able to persuade the authorities to act in order to obtain them for the British Museum. A journal written during an excursion in Asia Minor includes very detailed drawings of the archaeological artifacts from the author's sketchbook. These and similar drawings were used as testimonies of the existence of and the value of such remnants. By using such sketches, Fellows persuaded the trustees of the British Museum of the importance of these artifacts, which resulted in their removal from Xanthus, the capital of Lycia. Often these drawings include one or two Turkish figures standing or sitting cross-legged by the remains and smoking pipes, as can be seen from the drawing of the tom tomb of Pavaya, called by Fellows the Marble Tomb, which was among the most magnificent artifacts taken from Xanthus to the British Museum. It is possible to see similar generic representations of Turks in other drawings, such as tombs in Lycia, tombs in Assos, and tombs in Pamphylia. At first glance, the use of these Turkish figures could be interpreted as Fellows' attempt to give a feeling of the size of the tombs. However, it is possible to argue that they were rather intended to project an image of the Turk as unconnected with the, and detached from the glories of the ancient classical past, which therefore fell to the British to protect. Such visual and verbal representations helped arouse public interest in the region, which in turn induced fellows to publish in a cheap and compendious form the present abridgment of my journals in 1852, Travels and Researches in Asia, Asia Minor, more particularly of Lycia. This volume included Charles Fellows' 1842 account of the acquisition of the Zanetian marbles, including correspondence between the Ottoman and British authorities. Among the few illustrations which this cheap edition has, there is a two-page illustration depicting the site of the ruins of Xanthus. In this picture, too, there is a Turk sitting cross-legged in the upper right-hand corner of the picture, hunched over and puffing on his pipe. Parallel to him is a marble statue, standing erect and formidable. The presence of the Turkish figure here serves no other purpose than to reinforce the alienness of the Turk from the ancient past of Anatolia. The Santos copy was originally given in 1864 as a prize to T.G. Carver, a pupil at the Forest School. This copy shows how much 19th century Anatolia represented the classical heritage for the British, a heritage in which the contemporary Turk played no part.